Hey, my name is Barry J. Neely, and I am a composer and sound engineer. And last year, IMAX asked me to create the music soundscape for their new logo, the IMAX with Laser, which is a format that plays at AMC theaters. And today I wanted to take you through the creation of that and how I did it. So what you're looking at right now is the program called Pro Tools, which I use to make the music and the sound for the logo. And I'm just gonna play it through, and then we're gonna talk all about it. I knew that I was going to be creating all the sound for the logo. And also I would be mixing the stereo version so that all the levels would be where I would want them so that the final outcome would be kind of how I heard. And then we were gonna bring it to the IMAX rated studio, which is I believe 12 speakers, 10 around and then two above. So it's this whole thing, we would be able to create more movement and everything more than just the stereo version that I would be making for the web. So I saw this whole thing broken down into ultimately three sections. You have the glass tiles, you have the eyeball that transitions to the speaker section, the speaker section being the second section, and then the final section being the lasers section. I am a composer and a sound engineer, which means I do sound editing, I do sound mixing. So I'm combining all these elements plus musical elements, and I'll get to the musical elements a little bit later. But for now, here are some of the practical sound effects that I knew I would be needing. I saw glass tiles flipping, so I started recording panes of glass scraping together. And you can hear these here. I tried to get all the sounds that I might need for the session, I tried to get those recorded first. I could then take those and sit at my computer and then kind of manipulate them as I saw fit. I have another layer of metal scrapes that I added on top of those. I also had some whoosh sounds, which I believe I created from a plane flying over. So all those combined to create this movement of these glass tiles. I also have another element in there, and even though I said that the synthesized elements are what came later and they're kind of the more musical aspect of it, I also use synthesizer sounds to um, give me more of a little bit of a high-end kind of sheen or glimmer is the word I use to describe for these glass panes. So just that little added extra layer. I'll play it all again. You heard a little bit of the shimmer, a little bit of the metallic sound, but they're all layered together and then blended or mixed to sound how I wanted them to sound. So it starts with an individual tile flipping and it devolves into smaller pieces. So I did that with the glass itself. I had big tile scrapes and then eventually goes to just broken pieces of glass. And I actually recorded those. I shattered bottles. And I actually ended up manipulating these shards of glass with my bare hands because the gloves were making it sound different than I wanted. So all this glass devolves into big to little. And I also shuffled a deck of cards. I felt that that would kind of reflect the action pretty well too. So it's this kind of wave and then another wave of tiles. And so I also took literal sounds of waves and did that. And to add something fun, I also heard a kind of a breath. So I recorded a breath. So for the second section, there aren't a lot of practical elements. Uh, that's because I wanted to rely heavily on the synthesized elements that I could get the super lows and the super highs with just synthesizer elements. But I did 
use some practical sound effects. I tried to do like a pulsing, sucking sound, and I tried to create that with sound effects, but I ended up just doing it into a microphone going, something like that. So here are the practical elements of the final section. And I didn't end up using any of the glass tiles. It just didn't seem to fit. So that's it for the practical elements. Now let's get into the synth elements of the whole piece. Let me start with the synthesizer that I used, which is a virtual instrument, meaning it's not a physical synthesizer. It's a virtual instrument on a computer. And it's Motu's Mach 5. One of the reasons I chose Motu's Mach 5 was because I mentioned earlier that IMAX has 10 speakers that surround you and two above, and I forget how many subwoofers. But within Motu's Mach 5, they had synthesizer elements that were 7.1. They were just a different form of surround sound. To be truthful, we just ended up using the stereo versions. That's because when we went into the IMAX mixing stage, we kind of decided we had enough going on. So we only ended up using the stereo versions, but I came in prepared. Now, I had a musical plan for this whole thing. Yes, there's a lot of practical elements, but because it's in three sections, I wanted to finish that final section with kind of a feeling of, Awesome. I can't wait to see IMAX with laser. Let me play you all the synthesizer elements together. So I just ended up using a 1-4-1 one, one chord progression. The root note, which I chose, is B. The second section has the full chord of E major. And then it finally goes back to a B major chord with the third. So you have this. All right, sounds resolving. And I did that over a few different synthesizers. So it's subtle, it's hinted, but it has the feeling that you want at the end of it. And of course there's other things going on. For instance, I used a synthesizer that had added to the glimmer. I just guess I just wanted that one glimmer at the beginning. And then you of course have this awesome motion bass. It makes for a really cool, nice transition. And we ended up in the IMAX studio making that sound go all around us. So you're sitting there and you hear it go all around you. Right now, it's just right in front of you. But that's okay, because it's still cool sounding. And I know I did those because they're very high frequency, very piercing. And I wanted, again, the speakers in this section to reflect the full frequency range that these speakers would be producing. And I knew that IMAX would probably want that as well. So again, there is a musical element to this whole thing. It's just very subtle. And the mix of the musical elements with the practical elements bring it all together. I'm gonna play it for you one more time. And that is how you create a music and soundscape for a logo. I want to thank IMAX for bringing me on for this. And if you have any questions, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Barry J. Neely. And that is also my website. And as always, I appreciate you watching. So thank you.